Hello, operators, whether you're tier one or tier none, you're welcome here. I was the white motorcycle policeman. I love my DPS peeps. Don't get me wrong. But self-reporting is amazing. Now we're gonna. This is another hot button for me. People talk about immigration, and I'm not opposed to legal immigration and those things. Right. What I'm opposed to, and you see it, and that's what I'm going to ask you about, is all the things that come through the border under the guise or under the people thinking it has to do with immigration. Right. Uh, you know this. Ben probably knows this, but won't admit to it. You and I could get in your car right now. Mm-hmm. Could we go in your county? And just you and I, no other intelligence. Could we find a load vehicle in the next four hours? Oh, I'm sure we could. Uh, load vehicle, load or load, people. load people. Yeah, yeah. We could find some drugs coming in. Right, right. Could some of that maybe be fentanyl or methamphetamine? Oh, definitely. Or? Yeah. That uh, uh, and and it used to be weed heavy because the Sinaloans run the state of Arizona, um, the Sinaloa cartel. Uh, for the most part, and so they control most of the shipments. Most of the shipments used to be weed. The model is changing. Meth and uh, heroin and fentanyl are the top producers now, and so um, that's their model. So most likely you're going to find those drugs when you find a drug load anymore. And I and I think very highly of our Border Patrol, mm-hmm. Customs Border Protection, and ICE agents. Those I'm not disparaging their work at all, but we see things in the media, not from the people on the ground doing the footwork, right. but you hear things like, Apprehensions are down. It's 120 degrees. Right. They're saying apprehensions. They're not saying crossings. Right. They're not saying recurring crossings with the drug guys. There's some guys who cross every week, oh, multiple yeah. times a week. Yeah. 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 And it used to be, um, you would get uh, what they call give ups, and uh, it, it's the craziest thing because the federal government is essentially facilitating these crimes. Because what will happen is, you'll get smugglers come north. And in a give-up case, they'll come north, they'll drop their drugs, the drugs will get loaded into a vehicle, then these guys would walk out to the highway and wave down Border Patrol. Border Patrol would take them into custody because they're here illegally, take them and process them, send them back to Mexico where they get their next load, and they bring it up. And so it, it was a constant cycle. And you even found spotting stations, haven't you? Oh, yeah, we have them all throughout our county. We had uh, Actually, we were the first county in the nation uh, to prosecute scouts because what was happening was at the time we, we had, and I was in charge of our smuggling squad, and uh, our, our SWAT team would do a lot of that stuff, and that's when I was working out there with our, our adjacent counties. Um, we had a county attorney that said, Matt, we want to help in this fight. Where are you lacking prosecution? And we told them resupplies and scouts. So, like, if you got caught with dope, we would prosecute you. But if you were the guy on the radio or the phone guiding the dope up, no prosecution. If you were the person supplying the scouts with their food, their batteries, all that stuff, no prosecution. So we said, we need to shut down the whole network, not just the the smugglers coming through. And so um, they said, well, the AUSA needs to charge that. And we said, yeah, the AUSA won't charge it. So the the U.S. attorney won't charge that. Um, Border Patrol can't get those charges. ICE can't get those. Nobody will get those charges because the federal attorneys won't prosecute it. So if you want to help us, let's prosecute those. So I had an attorney with a set of cojones, and he said, we're going to take it on, dude. And I said, cool, how are we going to do it? So he said, all right, we're going to qualify some of you as expert witnesses. We are going to uh, go through historicals to show what has happened in the past and how you guys have combated that and what roadblocks you've come up against. So he drew this big picture and a storyline to go with it showing why this is such a problem, almost like you do for a wire case. Um, Mm. We did this. And so we laid it all out, and then he said, okay, we're going to do our first apprehension and prosecution. So we teamed with Border Patrol, and Border Patrol was 100% on board with this because they were banging their head against the wall as to why they couldn't get federal prosecution on these. So uh, Border Patrol has a unit called BORTAC, which is their their tactical guys. Those dudes are some of the best man trackers, uh, probably the best man trackers in they our nation. They even get some guys on horseback, too. Oh, they? yeah. They're, they're awesome. I mean, seriously, like, these guys could look at footprints, and they'll be like, okay, it's five guys. They're headed northbound. One has change in his left pocket. And you're like, what the hell? Uh, but they are seriously good man trackers. So BORTAC is also good at... Uh, 
uh, mountaintop insertions out of Blackhawks and getting on these scouts because these scouts. Now, this I'm, is operator talk. This is where <laughs> I get excited. So these uh, these scouts are truly, I, I believe, shape shifters. I don't know how they do it, but they turn into cactuses and shit when you go to chasing them. Uh, so you would jump in on them on a mountaintop, and they would run around a corner and be gone. Bortac, were, they were masters at capturing these scouts, and so were some of the ground agents. So <clears throat> the plan was we said, okay, Bortac are the guys to use to get the scouts. Um, we're going to prosecute them, so our detectives have to be the case agents. Um, Border Patrol had a good evidence collection team, so we teamed up and, and everybody had their own assignment. So how the first one went down was we, we had our plan. We had some high-value scouts that we wanted to go after. Um, we set up the plan as Bortac gets in on them. They get the scouts in custody, and they lock down the scout location on this mountaintop. Once that happens, our detectives and Border Patrol's evidence team go up to that location. They collect the evidence. Our detectives record all that. Then we get, some, we get those guys off the hill. We'll do some initial interviews up there to see if we've missed anything, get off the hill, and uh, interview them again and debrief them a little bit more. So we get that first prosecution, or we get that first case done, and uh, the scouts are walking tall because they think the same thing's going to happen. They're like, yeah, whatever, yeah, you got us. Okay, we're going to go back to Mexico, and we're going to be back in two days. So then they figured out that, wait a minute, we're going, what? The county jail for what? Well, because you're getting prosecuted. So we ended up prosecuting that first crew two and a half years for two and ten years for one because he had a weapon. With that prosecution, that kind of rocked the cartel side because they were like, whoa, wait a minute. And so our goal was we figured – now we can start prosecuting the scouts. We've got one through. That'll be kind of our test case. Now let's go after the resupply. Uh, so we started hitting at three prong, where we were hitting scouts, resupplies, and the smugglers at the same time, and it had a much better effect. And are you guys still doing that today? Still doing that. And, well, what actually ended up happening out of that is we embarrassed the feds. So the I'm AUSA, okay with that. Yeah, me too. Uh, we embarrassed them into and, – and when I say feds, I'm talking attorneys. The federal attorneys – said, whoa, wait a minute, uh, because then you had the federal agencies going to him saying, hey, they're prosecuting scouts, and they're going through left and right. Why aren't you guys prosecuting scouts? And we were telling the feds the same thing. Why can't you guys prosecute them? We are. And so the feds are now prosecuting those cases, and so we kind of just pushed it through to where they started doing their job, and it's been working. And if great. you're listening to this any place other than Arizona and you wonder how this impacts you, <laughs> How this? These drugs are not all being consumed no. in the state of Arizona. Yeah, no. We're a source state. That is heading to a neighborhood near you, God forbid, a house near you, or even your home. But drugs touch everybody, and they go everywhere. And to ignore what these guys are doing on the front line here, it, it's criminal. Well, and if you look at the opium, uh, they call it the opioid crisis now. The opioid crisis, I think we were, see, we're 2019, so it had to be at least at least seven, eight years ago, that we were telling people, hey, this is coming, this is bad, and everybody's like, oh, no, no, it's not a problem here. Well, now it's a problem everywhere. So, I mean, that's proof right there of what we're talking about, that we are a source state. So when we see it here, and if if a tactic switches here, i.e., they switch to fentanyl, right. get ready, and because you, it's and coming everywhere else. And if you think the opium was a problem. The fentanyl, yeah. with the quality control, and the Narcan, you guys are all carrying Narcan, right? Yeah, and, and the Narcan, uh, just, I think it was either this morning or last night, we had a guy, 28-year-old, that was brought back to life by one of our deputies. And I'm worried about your deputies, too, because right. what they're talking about, minuscule exposures? Yeah, like a salt grain size. Yeah, that's, that's not going to work. Right. So, you've got all this going on. If you're looking for a job, you've got to reach out to Pinal County. If oh, you're a lateral, lateral friendly, you know, back in the day, that was always a hard one. Right. But, but laterals are friendly. Detention. If you have any interest in law enforcement, get inside. Under the, and I should put on a disguise right now because I love detention. Uh, the sh chief knows I'm going to say this. He probably doesn't like it. L.A. Sheriff's Department, you spent how long in the jail as I a deputy? I there probably about eight months. But the L.A. Sheriff's Department guy is going to be in there how long? Uh, he was LA. I think they're two years. Two years in the yeah. jail, and you learn a lot in the jail, especially if you're not street smart and not right. been exposed. If your whole life has been a smartphone and, <laughs> and, and soccer practice, you, you can learn a lot in the jail. Yeah, that is true. Uh, so I worry. I worry about the future. I worry about the law enforcement, the guys yeah. we're going to hire. Yeah, me too. Because it's not getting any easier. No, no. But I think... Uh, 
when we talk about the guys we're going to hire, because, you know, there's a lot of generational talk, like this generation this and this generation I'm guilty. that. And, and uh, I think that um, this generation of youngsters that are coming into the workforce now, so I would say, you know, probably your 18 to 25-year-olds, very tax tech heavy or tech heavy tech savvy um i think a lot of them are lacking social skills because of that um but one thing they are that so you know go back to my generation of cops when we started they'd why do you want to be a cop i want to help people was the standard answer right and part of you believed that, but part of you was like, I want to do cool shit, you know? Um, I want to shoot guns, and I want to drive fast. I mean, that's a real answer. And, yeah, I get to help people people by proxy because, you know, you do a lot of times what your intrinsic motivation is that you are fighting for a greater good. But this younger generation believes that to their core like no other generation. They are truly about helping their community be involved and, in their, and being a part of something bigger, and that's... You know, one of the things we're trying to appeal to in those groups is that um, it's not just a job. You are becoming a piece of your community, and you become the protector of your community because we all kind of live where we work, you know. Right. We, we, we're all part of the community, too. Second Amendment. Yes. Guns. Love them. The gun lifestyle. <laughs> I love it. Belt-fed <laughs> machine guns. Yep, love them, too. HKMP5. Yes. That Magazine was my first dumps. SWAT gun. <laughs> HKMP5, excellent tool. I bet you're surgical with that thing. I don't know that I'm surgical anymore. I mean, a desk job wears some of that off of you, your surgical stuff. But <laughs> you, uh, <laughs> in the county, you have places that are, it's legal to shoot almost anywhere you look. Yeah, we have a lot of open spaces and a lot of uh, a lot of spots that people go out and, and enjoy firearms. And, and we get a lot of travel, you know, from the East Valley especially, a lot of travelers that come out of the Valley to uh, shoot out in some of our I'm county one of spots. Them. Yeah. I'm one of them. Yeah. But pick up your brass, clean up after yourselves. Exactly, yeah. Ugh, and sure especially trash. when you're taking, because I'm a big proponent of, of uh, because it was it was done for me. I went out with adults, and they showed me how to properly handle firearms. They showed me prop, proper etiquette, you know, all that stuff. And I remember one thing that, that was kind of lacking with, you know, my grandpa back then, because he was just an old Texan, and it was a different time frame that he came up under. And uh, we would leave a lot of stuff. And... As I got older with my uncles that were a different generation, I would I would go out with them. They were more conscious about cleaning up after yourself and, and bringing stuff. So, you know, taking your kids out, showing them that lifestyle, but being sure that you show them the responsibility at the end of, of cleaning up, making it like you were never there so that the next person it's has It's not just your grandpa. Boom. Not just your grandpa. That's what's we, up. with the Cleveland policemen, would collect tire weights, <laughs> and we would melt them in an enclosed basement mm -hmm. and pour lead castings. You ever wonder what's wrong with me? Lead exposure, because we yeah. did all that. Yeah. And you can learn from the Italian side of my family. Take a tarp out there, lay it down, yeah, right. pick up all your brass. That's that actually way. what I do. Yeah. Yeah. You can, also roll, oh, you yeah. can also roll up a... Never mind. You couldn't roll up anything in that to, dis <laughs> to dispose of. <laughs> that is Italian. That's, that's old school Italian. Well, I I'm appreciate just, you being yeah. brave enough to come out and spend some time with us. Absolutely. I appreciate uh, the invite. I want people, if you're looking for a job in law enforcement, look no further than Pinal County. We'd love it's, to have you. It's tolerable weather. I mean, right now it's a miserable, what was it, 72 today or so? I don't know what it was. Uh, I think it was in the mid-90s, mid -90s. so it's cooling off quite a bit. And those 120s aren't bad, you know. I was on a bike when we were hitting the 120s, a motorcycle, and uh, they're not that bad, man. You get used to them, and, and uh, I've never had to shovel any sunshine my entire life. True statement. Anything you want to leave our audience with? Well, um, I would just tell people to uh, please, one of the big things for us in law enforcement is is for people to continue to verbalize their appreciation because that helps more than you know. Because uh, people always ask me, is there a lot of support for law enforcement? And my answer is in our community, absolutely. Because we have citizens, random citizens come up to us all the time, thank us for the job we're doing, tell us they support us. And that means more than you think because uh, you tend to listen to that one small percentage of negative people that are telling you, you know, you're this, you're that, and, and you suck and all this. And it really is refreshing when people tell you that they appreciate the job that you do and, and, and they understand that you're dealing with uh, difficult situations and all that kind of stuff. So for the normal citizens out there, 
thank your local officer every chance you get just for the job that they do. But don't walk up on his vehicle in the no, pitch yeah, dark. No, no. Or yeah. when he's in the middle make of something. Sure, make sure you have front side approach, much like a helicopter. Exactly. <laughs> get acknowledged by the pilot. <laughs> Where can I follow Pinal County on social media? We are at Pinal CSO on uh, Twitter, I think. I'm not allowed on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Facebook is just Pinal County Sheriff's Office, and, and that's the easiest way. To, and that's where most of our social feeds are is on Facebook. Um, and, and you'll be able to keep up with the day-to-day of the organization because we try and uh, keep a pretty good constant feed on social media. <laughs> Again, I want to thank you for time. I wish you nothing less than life's best, and I appreciate you making the trip up here in traffic. Absolutely. To spend some time I with us. I appreciate being here. Thank you, sir. God bless everybody. And one 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 last point. Yes. <laughs> uh, in your Instagram, you make no bones about your religion. Yeah. I just like it. Every Sunday, there's a Bible verse, mm-hmm. and there's no commentary, and it's just there. It, right. it speaks volumes because you, you're not proselytizing. You're not out there. Right. But I know that every Sunday, because you get up like, I think you're in a different time zone because <laughs> we live about 45 minutes from each other, yeah. but you're up like seven hours before I am. Yeah. You're in the gym every day, but there's the Bible verse. And I want to thank you for doing that because the word never goes back void. It yeah. never comes back Absolutely. void. Absolutely. Yeah, and that, that is by design. I, I screwed up this past Sunday and I did two posts, which is against my rules because um, I forgot what day it was later in the day. But typically I try and post that Bible verse first thing in the morning. No commentary is needed because his word is greater than mine. And uh, I just leave that day alone. Thank you so much. Yep.